everyone, this is Anne Sophie Reinhardt. I'm the founder of Anne Sophie and the Body Love Wellness Circles. Most women I know struggle with constant dieting. Most women I know dislike their bodies or at least a part of it. Most women I know struggle with yo yo dieting. Their weight goes up and then down and then up and then down, but they never really keep their weight. Most women I know want to be free. Most women I know yearn to stop dieting, to stop thinking about food. They want food to not be an issue, to just be there, to feed them, to nourish their bodies, but not more. Most women I know want to get out, but most women I know, unfortunately, never ever get out. Or they get out way too late. They realize way too late what a gift their body is. They realize way too late what their body enables them to do. They realize way too late that their body really is their best friend. If you are one of these women, and chances are, unfortunately, that you are, then today I have seven tips that will help you to find your way back home to your body before it's too late, before you spend 50 years on this earth hating yourself, hating your body, struggling with food, and never ever feeling satisfied in the body that you were given. I know it's not easy to accept your body in this world that we live in. I know it's not easy to be at peace with your body when you're being told in magazines, on TV, at every corner that your body is wrong, that you're wrong, that you need to change, that you're never ever good enough. But it is possible. It is possible to be free. It is possible to look in the mirror and say, I look pretty good. Or to look in the mirror and say, well, I don't like this part, but I'm totally fine with it. I'm not gonna let it ruin my life. If this sounds cool to you, and if this is something that you're yearning for, that you're dreaming of, then this video is for you. Tip number one is to give yourself permission to accept your body. Here's the thing, and I just touched on it. We are being told over and over and over again from the day we are born that our bodies need to change, that we are wrong, that something needs to be different, that we can change that we can shape and form and mold our body in a shape it has to be long, but actually doesn't. We are being told that we're never, ever, ever good enough. This obviously messes with our minds, especially when we hear our girlfriends talk about how they feel fat, talk about how they hate their butt, talk about how they need to go on another diet again. We feel like we have no right to accept our bodies as they are. We feel like we don't deserve to say, I feel okay in my body, even though my body doesn't look anything like the bodies I see on TV, even though my body does not fit into our crazy beauty ideal of our times. I accept my body. But if you really want to accept your body, you have to start allowing yourself to do so. Tip number two is to ground yourself at least once a day. I like to do it three to four times a day. I have a mindfulness app that goes off randomly during the day, allowing me to breathe and ground myself into my body. So how do you do that? You take a deep, long breath and breathe out into your belly. You truly feel the breath going into your belly, you feel how it's rejuvenating, you feel how it's relaxing, you notice your body. You can do this when you're in line at the supermarket, you can do this at work, on your commute, before you go to bed, anywhere, but it really helps to become aware of your body, to notice your body again, and to connect with your body, which so often we don't do. So breathe, notice your body, notice your hands, notice your feet, how do they feel, what's the temperature, do they feel soft or do they feel warm or cold, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be long, 30 minutes is enough. Just ground yourself, connect with your body. Tip number three is to smash your scale. Now this is my favorite exercise because it's so empowering. Scales take away our power. We give scales power over our lives, over our day, over our feelings, over our mood, right? 
I remember when I was caught in the dieting circle, I would weigh myself every single morning. I would get up feeling nauseous already because I knew that stepping on the scale determined whether I would feel good or bad, whether I would freak out or be super happy and elated. So 100 grams oftentimes determined how my day was gonna go. It's crazy, but so many women do this. So many women give scales the power over themselves. So many women give away their power over their lives to a number, to an appliance, to something that should not have any power over you. A few years ago, I smashed my scale. I went outside and I had a hammer and I smashed it. It felt incredible, it felt amazing, and I have not stepped on a scale since. I don't miss it, I'm still alive, I'm not obese, I'm not out of control. My life is a billion times better now that I don't weigh myself anymore. You don't need to weigh yourself. Scales should not hold any power over you. Take your power back, take beauty back, take your feeling for your body back and connect with your body by becoming more aware of it but not by something outside of yourself. Tip number four is to practice gratitude every single day. I keep a gratitude journal and it has completely transformed my life. Just writing down one, two, three things that I'm grateful for every single day has helped me to shift my focus from what I don't have and what I want to what I do have and what I can be grateful for. And there are so many things to be grateful for. You just have to open your eyes and look around and you will see hundreds of things that you have that are amazing, that allow you to be happy, that allow you to feel abundant, that allow you to be yourself. So I suggest you keep a gratitude journal or you just think of a few things here and there that you're super grateful for. Set yourself a challenge to come up with a hundred things in a hundred days that you're grateful for. And you will see, and that's actually scientifically proven, that your life transforms, that you feel happier, that you feel more at peace, and also this goes hand in hand with feeling good in your body. Because if you feel good about your life, you will feel good about yourself. Tip number five is to use mantras. And I know this may be a bit too out there for some of you, but it truly, truly helps. When I was at the beginning of my body acceptance journey, and I would lie in bed feeling fed, ugly, bloated, feeling like I had ruined my life, I would repeat mantras over and over and over again in order to calm down and in order to finally accept my body. One of my favorite mantras is, I am safe in my body. I am safe in my body. My body doesn't want to harm me. It's my mind. I am safe in my body. Try to repeat this as often as you like and you will feel more calm. You will see how you relax and how the whole situation doesn't seem so severe anymore. You can obviously use any mantra you like. You can say, may my body be healthy, happy and free. May I be at peace with my body. May I accept my body. I love my body. My body is my best friend. You can do whatever you like, whatever feels good and right to you, but repeating it over and over again, using it every day, will help you to breathe, relax, and finally accept your body. Tip number six is to let go of what you think you need to look like. Now this is not easy to do, but it is doable. When you argue with reality and tell yourself that your legs need to be longer, that your arms need to be leaner, that your hair needs to be thicker, you are kind of crazy because reality is reality, right? You can change your body. You cannot change the way you look. You are the height you are. You have the bone structure you have. You have the metabolism you have. There's not much you can do about it. There's not much you can change. And if you continuously wish you look different, you basically hurt yourself over and over again. You basically place yourself in an impossible situation. Letting go of what you think you need to look like in order to be happy, in order to be successful, in order to find the love of your life, in order to be truly yourself is the best thing you can do for yourself. Because honestly, 
you will not be happier when you lose 20 pounds but your mind is still messed up. Because honestly, when you find the right guy, he will love you the way you are. And because honestly, when you accept yourself, when you find that place within yourself, when you truly connect with yourself, you don't need to look any different. So meditate on it, journal about it, think about it, asking yourself why you believe you need to look a certain way and what you believe will happen once you look that way. And then slowly tell yourself, even though I don't look that way, I still love and accept myself wholeheartedly. If you do this and if you use this mantra in that exercise in that way, you will begin to let go of what you think your body needs to look like. Tip number seven, and this is super important, is to work on your relationship with food. If you constantly binge and overeat, or if you starve yourself, it is really hard to come to terms with your body. When your body is heavy, when you breathe heavily because you've eaten so much, it's really hard to work on that acceptance, to work with your body and to feel abundant in your body, to feel free in your body. The same is obviously true for not eating at all. So when you're constantly hungry, when you always feel sluggish and tired, it's really hard to find that your body is great the way it is. It's really hard to find the energy within your body that you can have and that you're supposed to have. So if you overeat, undereat, whatever it is you're doing, work on your relationship with food. You can be a normal eater, and normal is different for everyone, a normal eater in your own way. You can create your own rules. But be mindful of how you want to feel in your body. Do you want to feel tired and sluggish and not able to breathe? Or do you want to feel energized and ready to go, full of nutrients? How do you want to feel? It makes a huge difference in your body acceptance journey. Obviously, don't overdo it, don't go crazy, don't go very strict, but just find that balance. You can find it. I found it. So many women whom I worked with have found it. You just need the right tools. You just need a coach. You need someone to guide you along. And yes, freedom from food obsession is possible. So those were my seven tips that will help you to come back home to your body. I hope that you enjoyed them. I hope that you found them inspiring. And most importantly, I hope that you will go and implement them. Because here's the thing, just watching videos, reading books, listening to podcasts won't help you to accept your body. Those are great sources of inspiration and you will have paradigm shifts by listening to these things but it's up to you to act on them and change your life. You need to take action in order for something and anything to change. If you continue doing what you're doing now, being miserable, you will always be miserable. Nothing will change if you don't take action. That's why I wanna hear from you. What is one thing that you're gonna do today that will lead you to body acceptance? Share it in the comment section below. I can wait to hear your answers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to tune in to video number three in this body loving video series. I will talk to you in a few days. Bye bye.